friends, it's Miss Ashley again. I'm so excited for week two of our Michigan watercolor series. This week we're going to be doing the state bird and Michigan state bird is the American red-breasted robin. It is one of America's most loved and well-known birds. They're very, very noticeable because they've got a very special coloring. They're brown and then they've got a bright red chest. I know you guys have seen them around and we're gonna see them again so soon in spring. They are one of the first birds that migrate back to Michigan in the spring. So they're the first sign of a wonderful warm weather coming. All right, now I wanna tell you a little bit more about our bird before we get started with our project, but I wanna make sure that we have all of our materials, everything's ready to go. This week, I want you to get your paints wet right now, right away, so that they can kind of soak up some of the pigment and they're a little bit darker, okay? We're still gonna use just as much water and we're still gonna paint out of a puddle, but we're gonna let that water soak just a little bit while we draw and talk, okay? So first things first, let's get our brushes wet and let's get brown and red for our robin. Make sure that you're rinsing your brush before you start adding water to the next color. Because if I dip my brush in the brown and bring all the water to it, and then I just put my water right in the red, it's gonna make our red really muddy. And if I add any of the red to the blue, it's gonna start to look nothing like blue at all. So we need to make sure that when we're filling up our puddles as we start, that we're rinsing our brush every single time. And then you're gonna take your brush after you, rim, you dip it and rinse all the color off. Then I want you to dab it on your paper towel to make sure we get all the extra color off. Because once you mix those colors up, it's kind of hard for us to make it pure and bright again, okay? So we're gonna get our brown and our red. We're gonna rinse and we're gonna dab. We're gonna get our bright green. We're gonna rinse and dab. And last but not least, we're gonna do bright, bright blue. That bright blue down there in between the yellow and the pink, okay? And we're gonna make sure that they've got the nice puddle and they're cooking, okay? They're starting to soak it all up. Next, we are going to need a brown crayon and a black crayon and a green crayon. These are the three colors that we need today, black, brown, and green. Once we have all of our supplies, we've got water in our cups. Our brushes are resting and waiting for us. Our watercolors are cooking and we've got our paper towel ready. Then we're gonna be ready to start our picture, okay? First, we're gonna grab our black and we're gonna make a big shape on our paper. Remember, we talked about it last week. We gotta make sure it's big and we're filling up our space because we don't want a teeny tiny robin. We wanna be able to fit all the details inside of our shapes. So we're starting with a big shape first, a big U. A big U or maybe a smile for a smiley face. And then we're gonna take it across the top and we're gonna make it look kind of like a bowl, right? A cereal bowl. We could put some fruit in there. We could put some fruity pebbles in there. Mm -hmm. Next, we're going to switch to our brown color right here. And inside of our bowl shape, we're gonna do lots of squiggly lines, loop-de-loos. You can do sideways lines. You can do swirly lines. We just need to make it nice and messy and really scribbly like maybe a nest would be because it's just a jumble of twigs and bits of fabric and things that birds find from all over the place to build these cozy nests for their babies. Okay, we've got our swirly bowl nest. All right, we're gonna switch to our black crayon and underneath our swirly nest, we're gonna make a line all the way across our paper, okay? It's gonna go off the edge. It's gonna go all the way across our paper because our bird's nest definitely needs a branch to live on. And we're gonna make a couple of lines, maybe four or five lines coming down from our branch. And we're gonna make one little line over here that's going up. Great. When you're all caught up, we can move on to the next step. We're gonna do our leaves shapes and we're just gonna make these little ovals around these long lines we've already drawn. And we've got our leaf shapes. How cool. 
All right, next we're gonna draw some eggs in our nest. All right, I need three eggs. I need one in the middle, who's nice and tall. I need one off to the side that's a little smaller and another one off to the side that's just a little bit taller than the small one. So small, medium, large in that order, okay? Great, I have a secret. One of our eggs hatched and it's a baby robin. So we're gonna add some little half circles to the side of our egg. We're gonna draw two little eyeballs. He's peeking at us. Peek, peek. And we got to draw a tiny little triangle for their beak. And maybe just a little bit bigger triangle coming down off of his forehead. He looks a little bit angry right now. He's a grumpy bird. He woke up too early. And his brother and sister are still sleeping. So we've got our bird right here. And inside of his little wings, we're going to add lots of little circles to look like the feathers. Lots of little circles inside of his wings. My little friend. All right. And he just looks a little angry. He's not actually a grumpy bird. So we got to make sure that we know that. And we're going to just put a nice big heart up on top of our age, right above our little robin's head. He's not grumpy. He's happy to be here. It's springtime. Like a happy little robin. Okay. We're going to switch back to our brown cream right here. And we are going to add some speckles to our eggs. So the robin's egg are very, very special. And they're very, very different than a regular bird's egg. So they've got little dots on them, but they're bright blue. They're such a cool looking egg. And sometimes in the springtime, if you have good investigator eyeballs underneath some trees, you might be able to find a little tiny robin's eggshell that you can look at and you can see it yourself. They're so, so bright. Now, I put my speckles on my eggs. Not too big, but not too small. I hope you can see them. And I've got speckles on my eggs. Awesome. We're gonna switch to our green crayon. And we're just gonna take it over top of our leaves and I don't want you to color the whole leaf in. Okay, I'm gonna show you what I don't want you to do first. I don't want a whole green leaf. Nope, that's not how I want it. I want you to just scribble some little gentle lines so you can see some of the white underneath. Okay, nope, yes. I wanna see some white coming through those because we want it to do just like it did with the stars last week. We want the watercolor to resist the crayon and it's gonna make our leaves look just a little bit more interesting, okay? If you really want to, you can take your red crayon. I know I only said three colors, but if you want to, you can take your red crayon and you can add those same kind of scribbles up here in our heart. I think we're all done with our crayon work. I'm gonna let you guys catch up. You can pause the video if you need to. You can rewind it, anything you need to catch up and get to this spot on our bird. I'm gonna go back over here to where my colors are cooking and I'm gonna get our bright green. And just like we did last week, we're gonna paint our background first. We're gonna double, triple check and make sure we've got that big, big puddle on top of our green, right? Great. And we're going to paint around our bird's nest and right over top of your leaves because, of course, our leaves are green, aren't they? Green leaves, green background. Get the whole thing nice and green. It might not be dark, but it's definitely going to tint the page. And we're going to go over top of our little egg shapes and our little birdie friend. Hi, little Robin. Okay. Keep going. Everybody take your time. Make sure we're not getting in any of those other shapes that we don't want the green color in yet. Because just like they can mix inside your paint pans, they can mix on the paper too. So that all of our background is colored bright, bright green. Springtime colors, that's what we're going for. 
So that's what we need. After all that snow, we need lots of springtime to look forward to. Okay. Now we're gonna go on to our bird. We need to rinse our brush, make sure there's no green in it. Rinse it good, dab it on your paper towel, and then load a little bit more water, water than color, just like we always do. And go ahead and get that brown. You're gonna take your brown, and you're gonna paint it inside of this nest. And once again, I'm a dripping, dripping away Hopefully yours doesn't drip drip. You gotta keep it nice and flat on your table or in your space so that it doesn't drip. But I wouldn't be able to do it if it was flat. There we go. Got a brown nest. How cool is that? Now we're gonna paint our bird and we gotta paint our bird a special way. Okay, so please follow the directions to this one because if we go over the spot where we need to make it red, we might not be able to fix it as easy as we'd like to. So we're gonna take our brown paint, and this time, I need you to make sure that it's not dripping wet, okay? So we're gonna dab it on our paper towel, get it dry-ish, and then hopefully you still have a puddle on that brown. If you don't, get your puddle, then dry your brush. Okay, we've got our puddle, but our brush is dry this time. We're gonna take that brown, not super drippy, but it's got enough that we're gonna be able to do this, and we're just gonna trace the outside of our birdie down his face a little bit so that he's got this big white spot right on his belly. Do you see that? Covered up his face, most of his face and his wings, but I left that big spot for a red-breasted robin. Now, I'm gonna tell you another cute fact about a robin. The reason that they have that bright red chest is because they're kind of bullies and they don't wanna share their space. <clears throat> so if another robin comes around, the male robins, they'll start trying to climb higher and higher than each other, all the way up, puffing out their big red chest like, sir, excuse me. And then whichever robin can get to the highest point wins and they get to keep the space. They really don't like each other unless they're starting to make their babies and their families in early spring. For the rest of the time, they're like, no way, man, go away. So, but they do like humans. Unless they build their nest on your porch, then you might need to use your back door because they are very protective of their babies. Okay, we need to take the water again. And just like we did with the brown paint, we're gonna rinse our brush, we're gonna dry our brush, and then we're gonna stick it into the puddle that we already made of red. And we're gonna draw the Robin's red chest. There he goes, the iconic Robin. Looking good, friend. There he is. And you're gonna take a little bit more of your red you're gonna fill in this big heart on the top of your paper. So we carry that red from the middle to the top. It's gonna to make our picture look just a little bit more interesting. There we go, Birdie. Hi, friend. Okay, now, remember I said they have special eggs. So they're gonna be bright blue. So we're gonna rinse our brushes. So we're gonna jab our brushes. And we're gonna make sure our puddle is there, but our brushes aren't too wet, okay? So we can make that color pop just a bit. We're gonna take our bright blue, and we're gonna paint our whole egg bright, bright blue. Now, we're almost all set. All of the colors have been added where they need to be added. We're looking pretty good. There's a couple of extra steps I think we're gonna add this week. And while we just wait for everybody to catch up and we maybe wait for our background to dry just a little bit more, I'm gonna tell you a fun story about robins. So robins are also a symbol of good luck and they're usually a messenger of a friend or a family member that has left us. So 
They're very special to me and they could be special to some of you. I don't know if maybe your grandma or grandpa have taught you this, but there's a special little song at the very beginning of spring when you see your very first robin of the springtime. It's the only time you can do it. You can sing this little song and make a spring wish. So you're gonna take your hand and you're gonna lay it flat. You're gonna make your thumb and your fist right on top, just like this. And when you see your robin, you're gonna sing a song that goes, lucky, lucky robin, lucky, lucky me, Lucky, lucky Robin, bring a wish to me, and then you stamp it, and you make your wish. And you can do it. The first spring Robin that you see every year is the luckiest Robin of the year. Okay, now we've got our bird and everything's all set. You're all caught up, I hope. Great, so we're gonna take our green again, and just like we did before we did our back, or after we did our background, when we were dipping and dabbing and making sure we didn't have too, too much water, but enough of a puddle, we're going to take our green again. We've got our green, okay? And instead of drawing our leaves like we did with our crayons, we're gonna take our paint brushes and we're gonna make leaf shapes by just stamping our brush because our brush is secretly shaped a little bit like a leaf. You'll see when I pop it onto the page. And we're just gonna stamp it all the way down and make one little line that connects them all. And you can do a little bit more on the other side and just stamp it. And run a little line through it all. So we have more leaves in our background, encouraging spring to get here as soon as possible. And here he is, my friends. We've got our swirly bowl. We've got our two blue eggs. We've got our slightly grumpy baby Robin. And we've got all of our leaves. We've got the leaves that we drew and the leaves that we just painted together. Great, and that's it. That's our lucky, lucky Robin.